alone, alone, but by every word of God. Yes. Right? So, he's, I mean, he's, he's giving shape to what it means that he prepares a table for me mm -hmm. in the midst of my enemies. And it's important mm -hmm. to understand the enemies wouldn't be the people. The enemies yeah. would be the death. Right. Right? The enemy would be the anxiety. Yes. The enemy would be the serpent and the serpent right. system. And that table is our tabernacle for all of us. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it's like with the Holy Spirit, I think people, have, not everybody, but like a lot of the, the circles I went through, people want to know the Holy Spirit, but they don't really know who the Holy Spirit is. And so then they're trying to work up an experience, yeah. right? right? Because they don't know really who the Holy Spirit is, right. what, the per, what the Holy Spirit ministry is, how the Holy Spirit ministers to us. We try to work it up. Mm -hmm. We try to work up an experience. And then we get off into some spookiness trying to work up an experience. Right. Right? Yep. But this, the experience that the Spirit is trying to bring you into is the experience of sonship. Right? That's the experience He's trying to bring you into. And He brings you into that with words. Right? With words that the Holy Ghost teaches and not that man teaches. Yes. Right? right. And so it's like if I introduce you to somebody, you ever notice how you introdu you're introduced to somebody and you tell them what they do and then you can know something about them? Like somebody who's, who's that? Oh, this is Greg. Well, Oh, he's my pastor. See immediately how they hear pastor and they know something about me. Mm -hmm. They have a greater intimacy with me. They can begin to develop a picture about who I am, what spirit I live and move and have my being in, the things that I might do, the things that they might be able to interact with me about. They get this whole big gigantic picture. Well, I don't think very many people have met the Holy Spirit in the form of seeing what it is the Spirit does. Amen. Right? Yeah. So it's like there is such a thing as the Holy Spirit, but what does the Holy Spirit do? Right? right? right. And then we have various uh, explanations of that. Some of them involve throwing people on the floor, making people cry like a baby, mm -hmm. making people laugh uncontrollably, make, making people bark like animals. Um, we, we do things where we, we come together and, and want to have these prophetic you know, type of things where we, we think we're experiencing the Holy Spirit, but man, most of the time when I read those pr prophetic th threads, I don't hear the words that the Holy Ghost teaches. Yeah. I just hear people talking words about whatever. It's nice. I mean, it, I don't say that it's evil right. and that it's not good for people to, to feel encouraged and all that kind of a thing. That's nice, but that's not really the Holy Spirit either. Mm. That's not really what the Holy Spirit does. Yeah. The words of wisdom and knowledge that the Holy Spirit give is specifically geared towards proving your sonship. First to you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, you're the one that needs to be persuaded yeah. more than right. anything. Right. I mean, what was the big attack against Jesus? Is he the son or not? Right? Right? That was the thing that he needed to be upheld in. Hmm. And so I think it's a, it's going to be a, a powerful thing in people's lives. But just in people knowing what the Holy Spirit does, they're going to experience the intimacy and fellowship that they already had. It's not like they didn't have an intimacy and a fellowship. It's just they didn't know what this guy does. Right. What does this guy do? What does this guy think? What does this guy say? Right? What is this guy busy with? And when you start to get all those things about them, you begin to know them. Right. Like really know them, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. You become, you start having intercourse with them, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Right? And then you start experiencing this fellowship and this intimacy you were created for with the Spirit. And you start finding that you have eyes to see all these things. You know, like in the movie The Matrix, where at the beginning, I mean, Neo didn't have the skills that he had. Like, right. he couldn't see things the way that they were. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, at the end, when he had understanding, the bullets came slower. And he was able to, like, see what was happening with them yes. and, like, move them around and everything. It's like the more I become aware of the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit ministers and intercedes in my heart in these moments, it's like I find what the Spirit does born in me and I recognize it, right? Like, I see the tribulation in the world for what it's trying to do mm -hmm. to me. Ah. And I, it's like I immediately recognize the oh, thoughts yeah. that I'm having, these oh, thoughts yeah. of angst are coming from the stranger. Yeah. Right? It's like yeah. I immediately recognize it. And I immediately am like drawn into this conversation with God. Right? Where I'm talking with God mm -hmm. about what he's done to conquer death. Mm -hmm. What he's done to seal my life with his life. What he's done to hide my life in him and mm -hmm. not in the world. Right. What he's done to put me out of this world where there's death and tribulation and hide my life in him. And I start finding that ministering to me in the midst of the tribulation. In the midst of everything. I find my heart believing. I don't lack. Right? I find my heart believing these things just from meditating and talking with God, talk, knowing what the Holy Spirit does. Mm -hmm. And it becomes like the bullets now, where they're in slow motion. 
It's like, right? It's like normally when tribulation comes against you, everything is like moving real fast. And next thing you know, before you had time <coughs> to think about anything, you're like really freaked out. Mm -hmm. Where the hell is God? Where the hell is my life? What the hell is happening? I mean, you're losing it. What I see now in knowing the Holy Spirit like this, it's like in the Matrix where things stopped and went slow. Yeah. It's like that whole process happened slow in my life now where I see what's happening and I see what it's trying to tell me. And it's like immediately my heart knows it's a lie. And it's like immediately I start fellowshipping with the truth. Oh, wow. And it's like immediately I find the Holy Spirit strengthening me in the inner person. And I see it all happening, right? Yeah. And it's like it catches the lie. It actually keeps my heart and my mind for me, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, I find most people, the Holy Spirit's trying to do that inside of everybody. But they don't really know what the Holy Spirit's trying to do. And so what I, what, I'm, what I believe is going to happen is in, in preaching messages like this and talking about it, people are going to have eyes to see the dynamic better. They're going, to, they're going to know exactly when they're hearing the voice of the stranger. Right. right? Because most of the time when we're experiencing anxiety, we don't have a face there. We just feel anxiety and we think it must be true. Mm. Well, if yeah. we could see a physical picture of the serpent there and see that he was the one speaking anxiety at us, we'd all think, well, that's a lie. Yeah. Right. 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 It'd be Back so right. It'd yeah. be so much easier just to be <laughs> right. like, well, that's a bunch of BS. Yeah. Right. Yes. right. Yeah, and so it's just like I'm trying to introduce people to what the Spirit is already doing in their life, and I'm hoping in doing that, people will have eyes to see. It'll make things go slow motion. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Where the, no, that's the voice of the stranger. Oh, I see what he's doing here. I know. I know his devices. Paul prayed that we would know the device of Satan, so we wouldn't be beguiled like Eve. Mm -hmm. Right? It's like we didn't we didn't know how he accused us right. or what he used to accuse us right. or what was the accusation. Mm -hmm. We didn't know any of that. And for so long in Christianity, we actually believed all the stuff was true. Sure. Right? Yeah, sure. And so now it's real difficult if you believe that we thought the accusations had come from God. Yeah. And we thought they were true. Yes. And so now, if that's the foundation from which you're engaging in the gospel, it becomes very difficult after the fact to now think the accusations are a lie. Yeah, right. Because if they were true and they did come from God, then how can they not be true now? And then we teach about the Holy Spirit as if he's the accuser of the brethren. As if he's the one uncovering people's nakedness right. and pointing out their fault. Right. Come right. on, man. Right. Come on, man. 